Usually light materials are weak, brittle, or have some kind of problem with them. This is why the light construction metals, titanium, aluminium, and magnesium, are so important in today's aerospace and automotive industries. With increasing pressure for reductions in CO2 emissions, road vehicles and planes need to be more fuel efficient, which means lighter. Titanium alloys can be half the weight of steels and exceed their strength by far, and aluminium alloys can be a quarter of the weight of steels and have comparable strength. So how can these metals become so strong but remain so light? To understand how the strength of these metals are increased, we must define what we mean by strength. Commonly the strength of a metal is determined by its yield stress. This is the applied stress at which the deformation mode changes from elastic to plastic. The difference between elastic and plastic deformation is best compared to the behaviour of a spring. Elastic deformation is where the bonds between atoms stretch and return to their original position once the stress is removed. That is, elastic deformation attains the original shape and material, like a spring when you don't pull it apart too hard. Plastic deformation is where atoms slip over each other in lines which are called dislocations. Once slipped, the atoms do not return to their original position after the stress is released, changing the shape of the material. This is what happens when you pull on a string too hard and it, well, becomes kind of useless. Some materials can withstand more elastic deformation than others, like the metals that springs are made from. Some can't. On the other hand, some materials can withstand more plastic deformation than others, like rubber. Some are brittle and break easily, like glass. Preventing the movement of dislocations increases the yield stress of an alloy. Generally, an alloy can be designed to some extent to have the properties required of it in a particular use. Titanium alloys are used in commercial and military aircraft components, such as fastening elements, airframes, landing gear and engine components because of their high strength and high operating temperatures. They are also used in car combustion engines and interestingly in a process called osseo integration whereby titanium is attached directly to the bone to anchor prosthetic limbs. Titanium alloys such as the workhorse of the titanium industry, titanium with 6 weight percent aluminium, 4 weight percent vanadium, or just Ti-6-4, attain their high strength due to the structure obtained through phase transformations. Up to 883 degrees C, pure titanium has a hexagonal close packed crystal structure. This is where the atoms form a hexagon with one more atom in the centre, three lie on top of that, then the hexagon lies on top of that and so on and so forth. Arranged in this manner they have the highest density of atoms possible. This particular phase of titanium is called the alpha phase. If the temperature of titanium exceeds 883 degrees C, its crystal structure changes to a body centre cubic arrangement. This crystal has eight atoms at the corner and one in the centre. It has a lower density than the hexagonal close pack crystal structure. In titanium, this phase is called the beta phase. Alloys such as Ti-6-4 have a temperature range where alpha and beta exist individually and the region in between where they coexist. Once the beta or joint alpha and beta phase is formed, it can be controlled cooled to retain some of the phases at room temperature. This produces a new structure on a microscopic scale. On this scale, the structure of the metal is broken up into grains. The grain boundaries hinder dislocation movement and increase the strength of the material. In an untreated alpha phase, the grains are evenly shaped and relatively large. However, if cooled from the beta or alpha plus beta phase, the structure changes to a basket weave structure where the grains are tightly weaved together. Recently, the titanium industry has been focusing a lot of its resources on 3D printed components, and much research is being conducted on getting the perfect balance of alpha and beta phases. To reduce weight further, with a strength penalty paid of course, we turn to aluminium. In 1903, aluminium was first used in aerospace when it was incorporated into the Wright Brothers wood frame biplane. Today, 80% of typical commercial aircraft by weight is made from aluminium alloys. Many of the strongest aluminium alloys, like magnesium alloys, gain their strength from a mechanism called precipitation hardening. This is where blobs of alloying elements clump together within the aluminium. For example, aluminium 2000 series alloys are alloyed with copper which forms plates or plate precipitates which contain molecules of two aluminium atoms and one copper atom within the metal. These precipitates prevent the movement of dislocations increasing the strength of the metal. The yield stress increment can be improved further by increasing the number of precipitates and obtaining a random space in between them, maximising their hindrance to dislocations. This can be achieved through specific heat treatments. At room temperature, many alloying elements won't dissolve into the aluminium, like having too much sugar in your coffee. Only by increasing the temperature of the aluminium will these atoms dissolve. Once dissolved, these atoms will mix or diffuse until randomly spaced within the aluminium atoms. Heating at a lower temperature allows them to clump together and form precipitates, which are higher in number and randomly spaced. The effectiveness of the precipitates to hinder dislocation movement is dependent on their size, shape and where they form in the crystal structure. The strength of aluminium, like the other light metals, can benefit from additional processes common to all industry alloys, like grain refining processes such as extrusion and rolling. 
Ultimately, the processing routes of these alloys are extremely complicated and we just can't cover it in one short video. For further reduction in weight, metallurgists are looking to magnesium alloys. These alloys are as light as you can get, really, if we ignore lithium, beryllium, sodium. However, they aren't nearly as strong as aluminium or titanium alloys, and they suffer from a whole variety of problems, such as poor formability and just plain setting on fire when you don't want them to. Current research is tackling these problems with magnesium alloys, and the amount of them in use is on the rise. Thank you for watching this Metallurgy Minutes video brought to you by the Advanced Metallic Systems Doctoral Training Centre based at Manchester and Sheffield University in UK. Please check out our other videos and give us a like on Facebook.